One theory is that the near-death experience is simply a function of anoxia, the condition when the brain is starved of oxygen. Alan Pring is a former Royal Air Force pilot who knows what it's like to be without oxygen. I was rather stupid and I went far too high without oxygen. You get lightheaded, euphoric and nothing seems terribly important. But Alan has also had a near-death experience which he recalls with absolute clarity. He insists it's quite distinct from the mental confusion of oxygen deprivation. It's there, like no other memory. It began during a routine operation. I knew that I was dead. I wasn't bothered. And I felt as if I was waiting for something to happen. And it did. In a flash, the whole of my life passed before me. Everything that I'd ever done, ever thought, ever said, was there. And I floated off through this darkness and drifted down into a, a, a large, very large room. And in each corner, there was a figure. They all seemed to have like a monk's cowl, and they all had their faces turned away from me. And then they started to ask me questions. What do you regret about your life? I suppose the times I've hurt people. What is the most important thing you've learned? To be wise, with humility. Alan Pring found himself being judged, a familiar feature of the near-death experience. It's very moral and very judgmental, and but the person who's judging is you. You judge yourself, and all those nasty little grubby things you've done, you don't like very much. And now I was in a place that uh, words cannot describe. Just a wonderful aurora of, 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 of light all embracing love, compassion, knowledge, was pouring in. What happened next was the worst moment that I'd ever know. I realized I couldn't go on. I had to turn around and come back. The reason I had to come back was, or that I felt, was that I was very much in love with my wife. And I wanted to be able to tell her that she can't die. It's impossible to die. So what accounts for Alan Pring's visions of a possible afterlife if it's not a lack of oxygen? Drugs, whether taken medicinally or recreationally, often lead to similar states. Could this be the answer? The difficulty with those theories is that when you create these wonderful states by taking drugs, you're conscious. In the near-death experience, you're unconscious. And one of the things we know about brain function in unconsciousness is that you cannot create images, and if you do, you cannot remember them.